Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Marie and I am an artist and new to gouache and I wanted to record my process on um, what I learned. So uh, right now I'm showing my materials, my art materials. I've got my jugs, my three quarter inch brush and my gouache paint. Um, I've got my um, uh, painting sketched out. Um, it's a two inch by three inch um, painting and um, the photo is a reference from a very talented photographer named Mark Pelletier of Lower Rockport, New Brunswick and um, this was just a study sketch um, to start um, to kind of warm up from my um, larger sketch so this is just me kind of playing around and I also wanted to make more videos so why not um, film myself and post a video of me painting a practice sketch and it's just to show that anybody can paint um, even for a small scale it's pretty easy and there's no pressure so I just wanted to share that with you and I do want to say that if you do like this video please like and subscribe it, it it's going to help me uh, reach other viewers too um, and I know I just started but um you know, I kind of enjoy doing these and um, the more people who view it, uh, the more feedback that I can get to improve uh, because, you know, I, as I said in my last video, I'm trying to practice on public speaking. So this helps me. And also I like to share what I know. Um, I really don't like keeping it to myself. Um, and I find that there's a joy in sharing what I learn too because I like helping people um, as, you know, at my, my experience as an artist. You know, I have other people who helped me. I learned from others. So that's what I want to do in return for you all. So I'm going to put up the reference photo for you to follow and you'll be able to see um, my methods and why I'm painting a certain color and you can compare that with the photo um, at the same time. I find that having a reference photo while showing um, uh, my painting process is really useful because you can see um, why and how I'm painting and you can compare why I chose certain colors. And um, so what I started first was the horizon and also I wanted to preserve the lightest areas. For some reason with gouache, I'm unable to um, get the lightest lights back if I already add paint to it. So um, a great artist had um, suggested to me to preserve the whites. Um, her name is Heather Ean. And she's a great artist that you can check her out. Um, and she does beautiful gouaches. Um, but uh, she had helped me with that tip and it's been very helpful since learning that. So I've been very mindful about preserving my lightest areas. So like I said, I started with a horizon and I used a mix of cadmium orange and cadmium yellow and permanent white and it gave me this yellow orange light mixture um, so I had done that as the first stroke of paint and then now I'm working with a sky uh, using a phthalo blue and cobalt turquoise it gave me this really nice um, blue that felt like it was a sunny day 
um, along with permanent white, of course. Um, that's another thing with gouache is that uh, I learned that you will be using a ton of white um, and not a lot of the other colors, um, uh, the other paint colors, because the color is so pigmented that you don't need a lot of it. Uh, but I do keep refilling my permanent permanent white. I also wanted to mention that I chose this reference photo uh, for an art challenge in a group that I belong to. And uh, the challenge was for a complementary colors challenge. Um, so in this photo, I saw that it was uh, the complementary colors of blue and orange. Even though the orange was desaturated, um, I found it was a great um, challenge uh, for uh, painting. Especially since, uh, from what I see in photos and landscape photos, orange is usually the most saturated and all the other colors are desaturated. So it was a really nice, um, nice practice to do this one. So I'm going to speed up the video a bit um, and explain that um, once I'm done with the sky, I started with the water. Um, I'm also trying to practice um, different methods of painting and exploring different brushes with gouache. Um, so I tried to block in this time um, the same color that I have on my brush. That seems to save some time. Um, in other videos, uh, probably one that I'll have in the future, I'm going to be posting um, other methods that I try so you can see for yourself um, you know if I if I crash and burn or if I'm a success but at least it shows you you know what you can do with gouache uh, one thing I did learn that I wanted to share with you that using a three-quarters brush is very handy because on each end uh, of tip of the brush you can um, dip one color and then dip another color on the other tip and then you can use it simultaneously as a long streak or you can do a streak with one end one tip and then do a second stroke with the other color and since um, the gouache is still wet uh, gouache dries so quickly that it's very hard to blend with this method, it's really handy to, to learn. So if you want to try that out and see if it works for you, let me know uh, what you think about that. So here is where I start to paint the trees in the background. Um, I used Windsor Green and Sap Green and Cadmium Orange. Um, I wanted to include Cadmium Orange um, and almost everything that I was painting in this piece except the sky um, because I wanted to create more harmony so it was just a little experiment that I wanted to do and now I'm going to start with those posts that are in the front those wooden posts it was very interesting because I was seeing all these different colors um, in these posts like greens and oranges and uh, purples. So that's what I mixed. From what I hear, you just paint what you see and that's what I saw. Um, and it does look more colorful than the photo, which I enjoy. I always like to push the color limits more. Um, and I wanted all of my paintings to be more vibrant. So I'm kind of glad that I did that. I just try to pay attention to not mix, um, or muddy up colors too much because I kind of like that, um, the color is still looks pure when I paint. So here I start to paint the land with cadmium orange of course and I also mixed in some cadmium red and light purple. 
I didn't want the attention to go to the land. I wanted it more on the horizon on the left side. So I believe that I go over it again with darker values to kind of tone everything down. So I start to paint the forefront in the same colors as the land in the background. So it's the same mix. So this is the part that I regret and it was painting this particular log in the forefront. Uh, I think that I forgot to put some orange in it and that's why it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. And that's why we do these warm-up sketches um, of larger pieces that um, you can test out what works and what doesn't. And I'm kind of glad that I did um, this practice warm-up sketch for the larger version because I corrected that. And you'll see that the eye goes to this log first and not in the horizon line. So that was something that was a really good thing that I learned in this painting. So apart from that log, I found that I really enjoyed uh, this painting and I learned a lot. I find that these warm-ups are really good um, to study the composition and color scheme before you start something bigger. Um, I also really enjoy painting small for some reason because maybe there's no pressure involved and because you're painting with such a big brush there's just you know no pressure to add any details and I really enjoyed this painting. So here's the finished painting. Um, I kind of like it. I think it's cute to do these little minis and to share my process here. And uh, I'd love to know what you think about uh, these paintings or these videos. Um, and let me know if there's anything that I can improve on. Um, I found that I uh, seem to be finding my words more quickly, thank goodness. And I'm not stuttering a lot like my first video. So I'm very relieved about that. And here is the actual large version of the same photo reference. Uh, so the mini one took me about an hour to do, and this one actually took me a few hours. And you can tell the difference, or I hope that you do. Um, so I spent a lot of time doing the details and making sure that um, the uh, worn out wood was uh, looked very textured um, and the reflections on the water had a lot more detail too so I was really happy um, and I fixed that purple log too <laughs> so I was very happy that it wasn't an eyesore uh, like the mini version was so just let me know what you think and also, if you uh, did like this video, please like it and subscribe and share it if you want. If you have any suggestions on other YouTube videos, I'd love to hear from you. And um, please check out my other videos um, that I have with commentary. And hopefully it helps you or entertains you. So I hope that uh, you all have a good week and see you next time.